Hello everybody! Today we are going to look at one of the most impressive structures ever created by humans in the entire history of civilization, the Egyptian Pyramids of Giza. We're going to be using satellite images from Microsoft Bing. Let's go to it. So we're going to start from space and we're going to zoom in. And you don't have to zoom in too far from a satellite image to see the green band of the Nile Valley as it runs uh, through Egypt into the Nile Delta there in the yellow circle uh, to the Mediterranean Sea. Now an important feature of the Nile River is that it flows from the south to the north. So the, the uh, Nile River flows to the Mediterranean and it fans off into this delta and it's called a delta because it actually resembles the Greek letter delta. And I have a, a, a yellow delta uh, symbol inside the delta to show you what it, it looks like. Now the, the Nile River, as it uh, runs up Egypt, it does sort of resemble a flower. And you can see the flower stem in the south and then the flower petals in the north as it reaches as it becomes a delta and then reaches the Mediterranean. We're going to focus on the flower receptacle where the stem and the budding flower come together in that yellow circle area. And we're going to zoom in that satellite image right there. So as we focus on the flower receptacle and zoom in closer, we're going to see some dots in, uh, in this area. And we're going to see some black spots and as we zoom in closer, we're going to realize that those black spots are the north face of the pyramids. And as we zoom that satellite image in just a little bit further, we see that these are clearly the pyramids of Giza. There's three great pyramids on the plateau of Giza. There's Khufu, Khafre, and Menkera. Now, an important thing about these names and the spellings is you got to remember that these structures are so old. They have been through so many different civilizations since they were built that the, the pronunciations and the spellings have changed over time. And if you look at different sources, um, so for instance, Kafra might be Kafret with an E in, in a different place, or even Kiops. Uh, for Khufu in other sources, just depending on who you're reading. And it's just because you have the indigenous demotic language of Egypt on top of ancient Greek, on top of Arabic, on top of the 19th century uh, British archaeologists who did some of the research. Now, Khufu, Khafre, and Menkera are named after the pharaohs who built them. And they, so they each succeeded one another going from top to bottom. Khufu is first, Khafre is next, Menkera is the third. Now, geographically, the Great Pyramids of Giza are right outside of the ma major city of Cairo, Egypt. And so the people that live in Cairo... They can see the pyramids uh, from their apartments, from their businesses. And now today, the major city of Egypt is Cairo. In antiquity, it was Memphis, which was near modern day Cairo. Further up on the Nile River to the south is the ancient city of Thebes. One of the most amazing things about the pyramids is how old they are. When Julius Caesar was alive, the pyramids were already 2,500 years old. They were already ancient history. When Moses uh, stood before Pharaoh Ramses II and he said, let my people go, the pyramids were already over a thousand years old. Just to put the pyramids chronologically in perspective and to appreciate how ancient there are, I have this simple diagram here to the far left is 10,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago. That's when the glaciers from the last glaciation, the last uh, you know, ice age ended. And then to the right you have today. And the Egyptian pyramids are almost in the middle of the end of the last ice age and today. The American pyramids in Mesoamerica, so uh, the Mayan and Aztecs 
um, those are much more recent. Those are from 1,000 or 1,500 years ago, whereas the Egyptian pyramids are 4,500 years ago. Now, conveniently, the pyramids on the Giza Plateau were built chronologically going from northeast to southwest. So in order, at the top is Khufu, built in 2550 BC, and then in the center is Khafra, 2520 BC, and in the southwest is Menkera, 2490 BC. So they do go chronologically from top to bottom. So we'll look at Khufu in detail first. Uh, Khufu, the, the, or the Great Pyramid, this is what's called the Great Pyramid because it was the biggest of the pyramids. Uh, it, each side, if you think of the base as a giant square, each side is 756 feet long uh, or 230 meters, so it is quite uh, gigantic. And it's easy to identify uh, which side of the pyramid is north because it's the side that's blacked out. And remember, the Egypt is in the northern hemisphere, so the north side is always going to be the, uh, the side that is darker than the other ones. is always going to be shadowed. Uh, now to the east uh, is the rising sun, and on the pyramids, we're going to see additional structures, especially on the east side, facing the rising sun. So there's a temple complex, and there's also a causeway that's visible, a highway that leads to and from the Great Pyramid. And uh, later on, archaeologists found ships that were uh, present near the Great Pyramid. Now, this might seem sort of strange to have boats or ships buried next to a pyramid. But if we think of Egyptian uh, or, or Greek mythology, when somebody dies, they're carried over into the afterlife on a boat. And so this may be some sort of a relationship between the pharaoh dying and then being uh, moved uh, across uh, on a boat to the afterlife. Now we'll look at Khafra, the middle pyramid, and this might be the most photogenic of the three pyramids yeah, because the top bit of it has some of the original fine limestone uh, blocks that would have been placed there. And some people believe that, that it would have may, may have been poured gold on there, and then the rest of the pyramid would have been a very smooth uh, white that would have really shined in, in the sun. These would have really... These would have really glowed um, in the sunlight. Now, Khafra, just like uh, Khufu, the Great Pyramid, has the same complex uh, associated with it. Um, so it's not just a pyramid. To the east of it, again, in the direction of the rising sun, you have a temple, a causeway, and then further down the causeway, you have a valley temple. And Perhaps the pharaoh after his death, uh, he was brought down this causeway to a valley temple and mummified and then brought back up the causeway to the temple uh, near the pyramid where a proper funeral was done. Now, we don't really know um, exactly if that's what happened, but that's, uh, there seems to be a, a lot of people that, that believe that, that this, something like this happened, that this was a... Um, uh, although a tomb has never been located, a mummy has never been found, um, that these structures were ultimately uh, uh, giant memorials to the pharaohs. Now, another association with Khafra uh, is the Sphinx. The Sphinx is actually down by the valley temples. Uh, and I've highlighted the Sphinx in this zoomed-in satellite image so you can see the arms and the essentially the rump of the Sphinx. Uh, it's often been associated with the... The Sphinx has often been associated with the construction of the pyramids. However, a lot of scholars think that the Sphinx is actually much older than the pyramids. In many ways, the Sphinx is actually more of a riddle than the pyramids because there are people that think it's actually much, much older than the pyramids. And finally, we'll look at the third pyramid, Mankara. 
And as we uh, zoom in, we can see the same complex of a pyramid, uh, an eastern temple, and a causeway. Uh, Menkara also is sort of unique because it has these three very distinct queen's pyramids. So perhaps the pharaoh was uh, buried within or underneath the pyramid, and then uh, queens, you know, the, the pharaoh's wives, uh, would have been buried um, to the south in those pyramids. An amazing feature of the pyramids, besides their just grandiose size, uh, and the fact that they were actually built during the lives of the pharaohs, so they, you know, these weren't giant building projects that went on forever. They were built rather quickly, within you know a few decades, within the lives of the pharaohs. So pretty remarkable. Uh, however, another feature of them is that they are pretty much square with north, all three of them. And there's been a lot of questions about how is this possible? How do they do this? Uh, there, there is some research that shows that maybe at that time, uh, the pyramids are so old that the, the stars in the sky would appear different. So the constellation uh, setup would appear differently in the sky. Um, however, uh, the stars between the dippers uh, would form a straight line, and this is perhaps how True North was found uh, during the Bronze Age uh, by these ancient Egyptian peoples, and maybe that's how they were able to find True North uh, so, so fantastically well in these massive construction projects. You can learn a ton about the pyramids in ancient Egypt by going to your library. I love these this series uh, by Oxford University, the very short introduction series. This is Ancient Egypt by Ian Shaw. You also can't go wrong with National Geographic. This is Atlas of the Ancient World, Exploring Great Civilizations. Finding old copies of the National Geographic or reissues, you know, even in the supermarket, uh, have great pictures, have great maps. There's no shortage of great coffee table books that are loaded with great photographs and pictures. This is Tutankhamun, The Golden King and the Great Pharaohs by Zawi Hawass. He's one of the big names in Egyptology. Even though the eyewitness books are made for kids, this book, Pyramid, would also be good for adults if you just want to look at pictures. If you're more interested in just sort of looking at the, uh, the pictures and you, if you're a visual learner or if you're just really busy, you're on the go. There's nothing wrong with getting uh, a visual book and you can just sort of look at the captions, look at the things that are interesting to you and you will learn a lot. Thank you so much for joining us. Get a great book. Learn about Egypt. Learn about the pyramids. Learn about history. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.